Hi guys, welcome back. Now if you buy any lathe cutting tools on eBay, the cheapest ones are always the large ones. One inch shank and above. And it's because the, uh, the smaller ones are more popular with the hobbyist machinist. So what I have been doing, this, this lathe is designed for three quarter inch shank. So what I've been doing, I've been buying the one inch shank ones and machining them down. Got quite a few. The most popular tools that I use I've machined down. So when they fit in the tool post, they're the correct height without having to put any shims in. And if you come to change a tool, you don't have to think, oh, is that going to be the right height? You know it is without any shims. Now these work fine. The only problem I have is when it comes to fitting parting off tools. We've got a quite quite a few, these are just a, three that I've got, I've got quite a few others. The only problem with the cutting height with these is that they're all different styles and when I do use them in this tool post, I have to shim them up to get them to correct height. Now the other day I was watching a chap on YouTube working on his lathe, as I usually do, and his parting off tool, he had it mounted on a rear mounted tool post, and it got me into thinking. Now I remember having this tool post, I don't know where I picked it up from, I think it came with um, the progress lead that I've got. And now it's not designed for that, it doesn't fit on the progress, as usual the chips picked it up and possibly inherited it from somewhere and just had it lying around. Anyway it came with the lathe. Now On the cross slide, there are two T-slots, um, presumably meant for mounting a rear mounted tool post. Now, this particular one, the holes for the T-slots don't mind, 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 line up, but um, this part, where most of the meat is, if I drill through there, they will line up with the two T-slots. The T-slot for this is the right size. And then that tool post will mount onto there. So, I thought that would give me a permanent setup for using the parting tools. And then I can forget having to mount them into this tool post. We just mount these upside down and obviously have the layer running in reverse. Now I've got I haven't got any T slots for this uh, that particular size, but I have got some bar that I can machine some out of. I was thinking maybe two holes here and two at the back, so I need four, four uh, T uh, nuts. So I'm going to put that in the shaper, take it down to the correct width first of all, um, and I don't think it'll need maybe eight or ten millimeter bolts through there. I'll come to sink them down and just put a, a cap screw through and then this would probably be mounted in that position and then it will uh, it can be permanently mounted there and uh, just use that as a parting tool
Before I go any further guys I just want to correct something I said earlier. I think I stated that if you have the parting tool upside down you have the lathe running in reverse. Well that's wrong. If you have the parting tool upside down you can have the lathe running in the forward position. You only need the lathe running in reverse if you have the parting tool the right way up. Right, that's that sorted. Right, where am I up to? Well, I've drilled four holes through this mounting plate in line with these two T-slots. I've made some T-nuts to suit. I've got some 8mm cuphead screws going through. So that's, that's bolted on nice and solid now. The uh, tool holder slides nicely on there. Um, this parting tool I've never used before. It was a massive one. It's been too big for my machines. Um, but with doing this I thought it might be a, a good time to machine it down and try and get some use out of it. It's the type that have the carbide inserts in. Up to now I've always been using the uh, this style with the blade in. Um, now I've machined this down, taken quite a quite a big chunk out of that. You can see how big it was originally. No idea what a lathe this was meant for. But I've taken a lot down, machined this side so it fits in nicely. There's not too much overhang. And I've taken it down this side so when it's mounted on there could have put the bolts in yet when it's mounted on there it'll be the correct cutting height without having to put any shims in so it's just a matter of uh, putting it in turning up and away you go now fortunately this one um, this is in tight I've not machined anything of this Fortunately, that one also works out at the right height, so that's a bonus. Some of the smaller ones that I've got, um, I think that'll have to be spinned when I'm out. If I ever use this one. I'll have to spin it round that way because of the stick out on the blade. But height wise, yeah, that, that'll need quite a few shim, shims under. But, that's not a big deal. Okay guys, I'm going to stick some material in the chuck and give it a try. Right guys, I thought I'd go in the deep end with this 3 inch stop. I've got the lathe in reverse. Everything seems to be locked down solid. I've taken this tool post off just to give you access to it so you can see. So, fingers crossed. Just going to increase the revs, guys.
well that seems good. Obviously I'm not going to cut it all the way through, we've been such a long bar. Once it uh, cuts through this we'll be flying off, so as a first try I'm quite pleased with that, so I think that's a success. Um, I can leave that mounted now and forget about it. And, uh, knowing it's the right height, and it's 90 degrees to the workpiece, in future, hopefully I might be able to do away with having the shins. And it saves having to buy a quick change tool post which are expensive. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that guys. Thanks for watching.